Bob, this uh, whole farm living extension IPM field laboratory is uh, broken up into to sites for IPM. Can you describe those for us? Well, we're at uh, the overall facility here. We're, we're at the Swanee Valley Agricultural Extension Center, and it's about a 300-acre facility, and it includes some natural areas like a seven-acre lake when we've got enough water for the lake, and we've got a perimeter around the farm that's sort of a mixed hardwood area. Within the production area, which is the majority of the farm, uh, we have that divided up into different production uh, areas. We have about a seven acre diversified fruit and nut orchard here. We also have the majority of the area that could be used either for growing vegetable crops or for agronomic crops. So a lot of the vegetable crops that we grow here at the facility includes things like tomatoes and watermelon and cantaloupe, cucumber, squash, and other vegetables. And finally, this facility is also known for its uh, greenhouse and hydroponic work. So we've got six different uh, protected agriculture structures, greenhouses, high tunnels, open shade structures, where we do a lot of training there as well. And those greenhouses really provide us a real unique opportunity to teach a whole different set of integrated pest management practices in greenhouses. In total, it ends up being a really diversified operation and fits, I think, perfectly into what we want to try to do with our integrated pest management program. Well, you have uh, quite a few different IPM practices being developed and tested and taught in, at these sites. I know one of them is farmscaping, for example, but there are many others. Could you describe some of those for us? Sure. A lot of the strategies that we are implementing here uh, may also be known as farmscaping strategies. And I think that term comes from sort of the farm version of a landscaping approach to things. So uh, when we hear the term farmscaping, those would be integrated pest management strategies that would be implemented on the farm. And there are several of those that we're doing. We have uh, a number of planning around the farm that we've established that are primarily native plants that have some type of purpose. And I like to think of them as plants with a purpose. Mm -hmm. They are either attracting a specific beneficial insect or providing some other service for the overall farm. And Carolyn Saft is going to describe what we're doing in that area in, an, in another module. We also are building brush piles around the farm to provide habitat for uh, some of the predator reptiles and other kinds of uh, arthritis pods that we can utilize on the farm. We also have implemented uh, houses for birds and bats and even barn owls here on the farm around primarily the perimeter of the farm itself and uh, Holly Ober and Katie Seaving are going to be able to tell us a little bit about the fascinating work that they're doing with birds and bats and owls. We also are trying to overlay any time a piece of the property is vacant to not go in and plow it and disc it and disrupt the uh, native uh, uh, nesting sites for a lot of our pollinators. So we're trying to implement uh, conservation tillage, no tillage where we can to, to, again, to help to build those populations and not disrupt their natural areas. The other part that we're introducing both in the greenhouse and out in the field is a system known as banker plants. And uh, Leilani Davis has been working with us on developing those banker plant systems out in the field. We're primarily using crepe myrtle uh, as a banker plant to build populations of beneficials within the crepe myrtle plantings, and that's gone really, really well. We're also, uh, we need to be able to monitor what pests are moving into the area and at what level those populations are building. So we have a number of different traps that are being used. Some are just used to monitor a pest, and we're really concerned about invasive pests here in Florida. We are a prime state for new pests moving in, so we are monitoring some of those new pests, like the spotted wing Drosophila, for instance, as, with a trap that we can monitor when it moves into this particular area, more of a detection than anything else. But other types of traps utilize uh, pheromones to be able to attract certain adult insects into a trap so we can predict when a corn earworm outbreak is going to occur as the moths move into the area. And Oscar Lyberg has done a lot of work with those, both of those types of traps, pheromone and monitoring traps, and will be able to describe that as well in a later module. 
One of the ex really exciting things for me to uh, have implemented here, uh, along with uh, Russ Mizell, is the trap cropping system and stink bugs have become much more of a problem throughout this region and uh, we have a really unique trap cropping system where we can use uh, crops like sunflower or triticale that are both extremely attractive to stink bugs and so they move into those crops where we can trap them and deal with them without ever having to spray the crop itself so that has been quite successful. The overall purpose of a lot of these farmscaping practices is to increase the biodiversity within the farm. So we want to have more beneficial insects of all kinds of different species, not just lady beetles, but we want big-eyed bugs. We want uh, other kinds of uh, beneficial insects to be able to move into the area. And so a number of our plants that we have around here, the purpose for those plants would be to provide either pollen or nectar uh, for a lot of those beneficials and help to increase those populations. In addition to that, the perimeter here, we have a lot of fencing here at the farm and we have tried to sort of naturalize the fence lines and the hedgerows by bringing in plants that also have a positive purpose for the overall farm. And all of those things are providing a service to our overall IPM program. And I think the, the phrase that's used in that situation is the ecosystem services. It's a big, big word, but it just means that every piece that I've discussed here is providing some beneficial service to our overall whole farm IPM approach. Bob, you're generating a lot of very useful information. How, how is it used? Well, what we're doing at the farm here is we're taking all of that information from our various monitoring and trapping systems, and then we add one more thing in on a weekly basis. We go out and actually scout the cash crop, whether it be, a, say, a watermelon crop or a vegetable crop, and go through thoroughly and identify the population of insect pests that might be there, and also the um, uh, population of beneficials that might be there there as well. So uh, Susan Webb is our uh, integrated pest management specialist from the university and brings students up and helps teach them how to do the scouting and through that process uh, we, we've been able to gain that information through, uh, through her expertise and she'll be sharing how she goes about doing her scouting program in, in another module. And so um, by transforming the way that we manage this farm it has really been noticeable. I've been here for a number of years and saw it as a pretty plain uh, farm in terms of the biodiversity and one of the really neat things about this project and watching it transform in a very short period of time I have been amazed at how quickly a lot of these beneficials and uh, nat native pollinators and other good guys how quickly they have resettled onto the onto the farm here even though it's a pretty big farm a 300 acre mm -hmm. farm so I've been tickled with that I think that the future is really bright for, for this kind of information and I think uh, the opportunity to, to add this into your statewide IPM uh, program efforts has been really, really exciting and I uh, look forward to all the good things that can happen here. What's so special about your program is that it can train people to go onto their site at their farm and tailor make a farming plan that incorporates IPM and minimizes all the possible negative impacts of farming. Yep. Well, thanks again for your help, Norm. It's been a really exciting uh, project. Thank you. You have a great project.